in visiting here with the Whitecaps specifically, what are you looking for out of some players in the squad here? Oh, you know, mostly just come out, see the staff, uh, watch the work. It's probably like the part of the day I enjoy the most is coming out, watching the guys, uh, you know, do their ground balls and do their, their daily routines and watch the staff interacting with the players and making sure that, uh, you know, just make sure the staff's doing okay and, and we're giving them all the support and everything that they need. Two top ten pitchers on this white cap rotation with Matt and Jones. What do you want to see from those guys as they continue to develop here on the high A level? You know, strike one and, and just making sure they're, you know, they're, they're using their arsenal, watching their routines between outings. Um, you know, there, there's obviously the, the stats and the different things they're looking for, but also, you know, getting a chance to watch them live is always different. You know, are they, you know, their tempo, can they control the running game? Um, you know, how do they feel their position? How do they attack, you know, just how do they attack hitters? But, you know, they'll just check in with the person, you know, make sure that, that they're doing okay mentally and all these guys, making sure, you know. But, um, you know, I think from the pitching standpoint, it's really just how's their body feel and then just how's their stuff look in person and making sure that uh, they're progressing as we hope. A lot of injuries in the major league squad, which I'm sure had you calling up a lot of guys and throwing some guys around. What does a high injury season, especially with the arms, do for your depth and, and just do for you guys as an organization? Yeah, you know, it's something we talk about every day is making sure we're covered everywhere, you know, from top to bottom, most importantly the major leagues. Uh, I, I do think our our AAA group, our young group of, of starters has done a good job of, of always being available when, when needed in Detroit. Um, you know, I think more than anything, you know, we had the COVID year and then obviously a, it was a, a shorter spring for our 40-man players. But fortunately, with our younger groups, we got to have the entire mini camp, the entire spring training. So. Um, you know, these guys got their proper build, and, and so far, knock on wood, we, we've been okay in terms of, you know, covering ourselves in, in the minor leagues. But, you know, it's all about pitching. The, Joe Madden used to always say, you know, it's just called baseball pitching. So it's, it's what I spend a majority of my time on with our, with our pitching coordinators, um, making sure we're covered, making sure we're responsible with, with how we do use things. I, I'd say we lean conservative, but I think it's the right way to go with young arms that are so valuable. When those guys that are usually in AAA get those MLB starts, how much are you using that as an evaluation for those guys when they are typically here for a stopgap? Do you put more emphasis or less emphasis on how they perform in the major league level? Well, you know, that, that's the boss's job. That's Al's job. You know, Al Avila, our, our general manager, um, you know, he's the one that, that is valuing those guys, making those decisions. I think what's good for us is, you know, we're doing it with young pitchers that we hope are here a long time. Joey Wentz and Alex Fajardo, Bo Brisky. Um, you know, players that have been developed through our system, they're not free agents that we're pushing to the big leagues to make a spot start here and there. It's, it's some of our good young pitchers getting that chance to pitch in the big leagues. So I think from a player development standpoint, it's really exciting that these are, these are our players. You know, uh, Alex Fado and, and Bo, guys that we drafted, once came in a trade. I mean, Elvin Rodriguez, another guy that came in a trade who's been in our system. Like, there are players that, that were drafted and developed or, or traded for here. And, now they're, you know, they're getting that taste, they're learning a lot. I, I think it's only going to benefit them individually and the club over the long term. There's a change this year with the draft now in July. Does that put more pressure on some of these guys that come in and only have a month and a half to show what they can do? You know, I, we'll see. I think that the industry is going to have to adjust. I, I do think um, what we are going to try to do as an organization is make sure that everybody drafted this year, that's the, the signing date's August 1st. We're going to get them on a field somewhere, whether it's in the FCL, in Lakeland or, or here in West Michigan or Lake or in Lakeland with the Flying Tigers because that, that's a really important year in terms of just moving from college or high school or JC wherever you come from and then getting onto a field and understanding a professional routine, you know, understand what's really like, you know, ride a bus and be around the boys. Like so we're gonna we're not we're gonna try not to lose that year. Um, I don't think anybody that sits in my chair loves the draft continuing to be pushed back, but We'll adjust and, and we'll uh, we'll do our best to make sure it's not a, not a lost season. Positive end, end here. Um, we've been seeing great production from guys like Colt Keith. Um, how is he impressed? And is there anybody on this squad that's kind of making a name for themselves that maybe weren't as much on your radar going into this year? Yeah, Colt's been great. I mean, I think you talk about age to league, and he's one of the younger players in the leagues as well. So you start stacking up the performance with the age. It's really exciting to watch. Uh, his defense continues to get better every night. And the quality of bat is really high. So, you know, it was a, it was a challenge to push him here at age 20. Uh, but he earned it by having a nice spring and what he did last year. So it's really fun to, to watch Colt. Um, a lot of good things here. You know, uh, Wencio Perez, another infielder, has sort of bounced back. I think, he, you know, he was a... Um, talked about a lot when he was younger but to see him you know COVID hit and he's, he's had some everybody kind of went through some, some different 
challenges in that last year, and he was one of them that, that definitely lost some development time. But to see him really bounce back, and he's playing a good second base, and you know he's just collecting a lot of hits. Having the quality of his at bats are really high too, so it's really exciting to watch the two young infielders in the same infield doing really well. Final question: You mentioned um, that COVID year offering challenges. Um, has enough time passed now that we're kind of finally getting back to somewhat normal, or do you still see the impact of that year on the development of a lot of these guys in the system? I think we're still seeing it. I think especially, you know, if you look at double A and, and this level, there, there's the ages and, you know, age is a number we all value really highly, but it's a little skewed by um, losing that year. And, and so we're all sort of still shaking out double A, high A, making sure we, we give players enough rope that lost that year, that we're not too quick to make a judgment on a player that we can just get a bigger sample size on and, and watch them play a little bit longer. Uh, which is we're trying to be really patient with guys that we know have dealt with some challenges off the field that were completely out of their control. All right. Anything that I might have missed or anything you want to add before we wrap things up? No, that's great. Whatever you need. <laughs> Appreciate you. All Thank right. you. Yeah, no problem.